Welcome to the Rise of Civilization. I know a lot of you are probably here because you had to take this course, but you chose the distance ed version and no one was really holding a gun to your head. And because it's warm, a good point of going distance ed is you probably want to stay home and be warm. I always ask students, why do you think UAA wants you to take this course? But I don't think anyone was trying to torture you by taking this class or making you take this class. And if you don't know, this is the Iron Maiden of Nuremberg. They actually came up with this device to torture people to get them to confess to being witches. And we're actually going to talk about that a little bit. So why are you taking this class and what are you going to get out of it? Well, hopefully you'll get an anthropological perspective on past civilizations and how they relate to the present, how our own civilization fits into the grand scheme of things, and how others might view us in the future and even now. How do people view us? Well, one of your assignments for next week is going to be to find an American joke, meaning a joke about Americans. And if you don't travel a lot, whenever you go into a foreign country, if you're not a citizen of that country, you have to fill out immigration paperwork. Normally, it's where are you from, where are you going, where are you staying, is your trip business and ple or pleasure. However, in the United States, this is what people have to fill out when they enter our country and they're not citizens. And a lot of people crack up at this who are not Americans because, okay, do you have a communicable disease? Are you mental? Are you a drug abuser? Um, are you a criminal? Are you a trafficker of drugs? Like you're really going to admit all this stuff. Have you ever been involved in espionage? Were you a Nazi war criminal? On and on and on. Have you ever been detained or withheld because you took a child out of state? Well, whether you realize it or not, we are kind of a laughing stock to some people at some times. And we're going to talk about that. And that's what anthropologists look at. So these are some of the interesting things you're going to learn that you probably never knew. And so just, I'm going to go through this to see if you can answer any of these questions. What civilization was the first to develop plumbing as we know it today? Now I'll give you a hint. We're not doing any Western civilizations, so don't even think about Greece or Rome. What is trepanation and why is it important? What are the Darwin Awards? What religion appears to be the very first based on, and I should qualify that by saying, one interpretation of the archaeological evidence? What are oracle bones? How about this? The rulers of what civilization had to do genital bloodletting? Who are the Anasazi? And why are they important? Who is the holy penis man? We'll talk about that. What I'm referring to are sadhus. What great civilization existed in Cambodia? What is sky burial? What is a bonobo? What city, or I should qualify that and say, what civilization was the first to have mirrors? Who had the first tattoos? We're going to talk about the ancient art of body modification. Where do we find the first eunuchs? If you don't know what a eunuch is, look it up. Who invented the first contraceptives? And who is or was Lucy? So whether you realize it or not, you're going to learn quite a bit of stuff. And hopefully one thing you'll get out of this class is 
to understand what critical thinking skills are. And here's the definition of it. You can kind of look at that. It means basically to, to detect BS when you hear it. Carl Sagan came up with the BS detector. Um, and you really need to understand the difference between observation and inference and how that factors into various television shows, especially dealing with archaeological um, information. Because the part that you probably don't get is just because it's on Discovery or Nat Geo doesn't necessarily mean it's 100% true. Um, and I'll give you one example. Um, we're going to talk about this a lot. Neanderthal burials. Okay. In a cave in Iraq, they found a 40,000-year-old skeleton belonging to a Neanderthal with flower pollen on the body. So, a lot of times you'll hear or read that Neanderthals buried their dead, that they conducted rituals. That is inference. Okay, what is inference? Inference, inference is pretty much an educated guess. How else could that flower pollen have gotten there? Well, think about it. Could have blown in. Animals could have brought it in. So you have to understand if we just show direct scientific observations on television, things would be really boring and you wouldn't watch. Um, something else we're going to talk about, we're actually going to talk about Bigfoot when we talk about North America. Um, it's hoped that over time you'll be taught how to evaluate new finds regarding our evolutionary history that appear in newspapers. Here's an example from 2006 when a, a bunch of several small skulls and skeletons were found in, on an island in, in Indonesia. So at first, all these newspaper articles came out saying that, well, perhaps in our family tree, there's a species of hobbit-like creatures. But as time went on, and, we're, and I'll show you more information about this, that um, they're thinking, well, maybe it was just a group of people with smaller skulls and not necessarily a new species. Yet the the graphic you're seeing on the right actually was from National Geographic. Um, another thing we're going to be looking at is evolution. And what you need to understand is even though anthropologists believe in evolution, the whole first part of your book deals with evolution, um, it's not my job to make you believe one thing or another. My job is to show you the actual archaeological evidence you make up your own mind. And we'll talk more about that as we go. So we're going to talk about extinct species of man. What's the evidence for it? And we're going to look at how anthropologists view the concept of race. So here's a good example. Which of these people do you think is Hispanic? What do we base it on? We base it usually on skin color. Well, if you look at the bottom of this slide, None of the folks in the last slide were Hispanic. Something fun we're going to talk about is sociobiology. And we're going to talk about the evolution of human sexuality. So I'll let you look at this slide a little bit. Um, it's kind of funny. But we're going to try to understand perhaps um, some things about our evolutionary history from a sociobiological framework. We're going to talk about mating strategies. He says, honey, please just calm down. Let me explain. The point of sociobiology or evolutionary psychology is that the people who believe in it feel that a lot of the choices we make today are based on our evolutionary history. Um, you're going to learn about primates and their characteristics. Sorry, I couldn't resist this. Um, 
will also make fun of the other political party as well. Um, and because I have a background in forensic anthropology, we're going to talk about human osteology and forensic anthropology. If you don't know what this is a picture of, it's actually a serial killer. Ha ha. Um, so the civilizations we're going to look at are Egypt, Indus, China, North America, South America, and Mesoamerica. And a lot of the information you've probably never heard before is it that when you were raised we had more of a Eurocentric curriculum. I'm older. I know in my day it was. I don't know about yours. Um, could it be that information about the historical significance of minorities was not taught in schools for a reason? Again, I think there was more of an issue when I was young. Um, we're going to talk about other environments and regions that you're probably not that familiar with. We're going to talk about the ancient civilizations of Asia and extinct civilizations in North America. And of course, forensic anthropology. We're going to talk about paleopathology. Now, I have to qualify and say that this is not an example of paleopathology. Paleopathology is actually the study of diseases in ancient populations. What you're seeing a picture of is artificial cranial deformation, and we're going to talk about that because it was done especially in South America. And hopefully you'll learn to look at things from an anthropological perspective and learn how anthropologists interpret how people lived in the past by examining the artifacts they left behind. So you have to learn to think like an archaeologist. And maybe you'll realize that maybe we're not that different from our very ancient ancestors. And if you don't get anything else out of this course, hopefully you'll realize that our civilization is really not the pinnacle of everything that has come before us. What you're going to see is that things come up and then they go down. Um, so it's not like a, a constant ladder leading up to the current day. A lot of these civilizations were great and we can't even figure out what they were like by the evidence that was left behind. Um, are we learning from the mistakes that were made in the past? Probably not. This especially holds true for environmental degradation, disease, conflict. So we're going to talk about all these things and we're going to talk about what led to the decline of ancient civilization. And finally, this is a joke. Who needs this course to graduate? This is a joke. Um, what you're going to find is I joke around a lot and we're going to have a lot of fun in this class. So have a great semester, do your assignments, and you'll have another one of these next week. Signing off.